Uh, my name is Eric Shanto. I'm from Lilburn, Georgia. I went to Parkview High School where I graduated in uh, 2002. And then I went on to swim at Auburn University uh, from 2002 until uh, 2006 where I graduated with a degree in entrepreneurship in December of 2006. And uh, after I graduated Auburn and finished up my college eligibility with them, I uh, became a professional swimmer and moved out to Austin, Texas, where I currently live and train. Some of my big accomplishments in high school, I was on three state championship teams for Parkview for high school. I was the first male ever to uh, graduate high school with a 4.0 GPA and win a national title. I actually uh, never lost a meet in college. In Georgia, I think more than anything else, uh, my club coach, uh, Chris Davis over at Swim Atlanta, got a hold of me right out of eighth grade. And uh, you know, he still, he still to this day uh, has a lot of influence over you know, how I train and, and where I train and how I race. But he kind of helped mold me and, and shape me into the swimmer I am today. Might have been as many as 17 years ago that he was in our, our lesson program and then from there, he went to summer league swimming. From there, he graduated to swimming year-round. Always been a, a great swimmer. Pretty much kind of a late bloomer. He was always kind of small for his age. Very, very hard worker. Always great attitude. Always great effort. Always a lot of fun. One of those kids that you really enjoyed seeing come through the door because he made your day just having him come through the door. He was always chasing the older guys and making them work a lot harder than they wanted to work. Uh, seemed like he wouldn't get tired very often and uh, those guys hated seeing him come because he really put the hurt on him in practice. There are definitely rivalries in swimming um, and, and those kind of take part on, on a bunch of different levels. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis for me, my training partner Brendan Hansen has had the world records in both the breaststrokes for the past two years and he's been the guy to beat. You know, every day I, I'm racing him and competing against him and, and we race all the time at meets and, and I don't want to call that a rivalry as, as more as it's maybe a, uh, a friendly challenge, I guess. Um, but, but you know, some people could call it a rivalry. He wasn't that good of a breaststroker before he came to school here. He was a big time I -er. and uh, really the first time that I met him was at 2004 Olympic trials when he got third twice. When you're used to being the underdog and that limelight isn't on you, it's kind of an easier place to be for sure. But right now I think that he realizes, yeah, I may be getting more attention, but I still know who I am. I still know what makes me comfortable when I'm racing and he sticks to it. I don't think he lets any of it go to his head. I really just think he uses a lot of it as confidence and every time he steps up to the block, he goes, I know I've been swimming faster. I know that I've done these few things to make myself better. I've raced better than I ever have before and I love it and just completely embraces it. We've got somewhere around 30 athletes that have made Olympic trial cuts. And out of those, we probably got six to 10 that have got legitimate chances. We have a number of people that are competing for the same spots. The Olympic trials is a happy time for some and an unhappy time for others because we don't all get what we want. We join you live from the Quest Center in downtown Omaha. Dan Hicks, Rowdy Gaines, Andrea Kramer with you. And by the time these trials conclude, they will set an all-time attendance record for a U.S. Olympic swim trials is again more than 12,000 have jammed in here and we've got a jam-packed lineup so we get you right to the opening event the men's 200 breast the finals top two represent the United States in Beijing. For my pre-race routine um, you know I, I, I'll get up on the blocks and I'm, I'm really fidgety I mean I can't sit still all the nerves and, and all the tension is usually gone and it, it's more just anxious to get in the water. Sometimes it, it feels like in an eternity you're up there and you just want to get in the water and go. Take your mark. Four lengths of the pole in the 200 breast. Well, certainly the race should come for second place anyway between Usher and two, Span and three, and Eric Chanteau in five. When the gun went off, Eric had a great start, got off the block, really clean into the pool. Really, really, really good pull out. Usually he gets beat by Hanson in the underwater, but he was right there on the pull out. And, and then in my mind, he ended up taking some really fast, hard strokes, which again, I don't think is the best thing for Eric to do if he's gonna swim his best race. 
Um, he's out in 29 plus at the 50, just a shade behind Hanson. Eric, when I coached him, was always a back half kind of swimmer. If he went out too hard in a race, it really hurt the back half of his swim, and I don't think he was successful. Coach Reese, for whatever reason, told Eric, I want you out in the first 50. But business at hand here for Hansen is to get on the team, and he looks like he's going to have the lead here at the halfway point with two lengths of the pool to go. Below him in lane five, Shanto looking very good. Shanto's in second. Usher above Hansen is in third. Um, swam the second 50, was out the fastest he's ever been out at the 100. And of course, I'm thinking, well, I guess Coach Reese knows what he's talking about because he looks phenomenal. I think he's going to win it easy because he was so close to Hanson at the 100. Normally, he's never, never that close to him. And then he started to run on him on the third 50. They were pretty much even. Hanson, all he can handle, there's Eric Chanteau right there. Yeah, right below Hanson. Chanteau going to the wall here. Hanson barely had the lead over Chanteau. Usher above Hanson was in third as they turned for home. Well, they're about a second off the world record. That doesn't look like it's going to happen, but this would be a huge upset. Here comes Chanteau. And Shanto has gone by Brendan Hansen, and this could be real big trouble for Brendan Hansen. Oh and my he, goodness, he's got two guys going by him now. Above Hansen in lane three is Span, and he's got the lead on Hansen. Shanto and Span are going to finish one, two, and Hansen is out of it. Span wins it. Shanto was second in a huge upset at these trials. Brandon Hansen is not going to Beijing in the 200 breaststroke. Shocker. Both first-time Olympians, Span and Shanto. When I knew he was an Olympian, it, it was relief. Mary called me and said, I've got really bad news. And I went, oh, Lord, a week and a half out. <laughs> you know, Eric doesn't need this kind of drama. And then he explained to me that he had testicular cancer, uh, but that they caught it extremely early and that he was going in for additional testing and he felt like that he at least would be okay to go to trials. And as he and I spoke, and we probably spoke for 30 or 40 minutes about it, I said, Eric, if you, if you have a choice of either making the Olympic team or actually swimming in the Olympics, which would you choose? And I pretty much knew what the answer would be. And he said, making the Olympic team. He just got another blood test yesterday his first blood test after Olympic trials came back actually at a lower level than it did before trials, which was incredible, which was awesome. So that's when the doctors are saying, you're still fine, we're gonna do another two blood tests. He won't find out about that one until probably tomorrow, which is Friday. Uh, and then depending on what that shows, they may do one more CAT scan. The first CAT scan he had was as clear as it could be. Nothing in the liver, nothing in the lungs, nothing anywhere else in his body, which is amazing. Um, so it, if it continues to be as good news as he's getting, I mean, it's good news for the bad news, um, I think he's going to be good to go. Superman is not my favorite hero, <laughs> which is crazy because I did a Superman dunk and everybody saw the little cape on, which I do love Superman, but my favorite superhero is Batman. I love Batman. I don't know why. Just the all black with, you know, the gold plate on it or whatever. I like that, you know, and I thought Batman was tight, you know, just a little outfit, him looking all swole and Batman. And I didn't, I used to hate the little Batman show, I mean, yeah, the little uh, Batman show. They'd be like, pow and bam and wham.